Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a foldable fat bike. This one is from SnapCycle. It's called the S1. And this company is actually based out of California. Uh, on their website, it says a bunch of young e-bike enthusiasts got together and decided to make a you know quality yet affordable bike. So that's what we have here is the S1. The S1 is going for $1,599. So pretty good price range for e-bikes. That seems to be the most popular price range for off-road all-terrain bikes around that $1,500 mark. Now I reviewed four other brands in this price range of foldable all-terrain bikes from $1,000 to $2,000. And based on the stats of the S1, it is very comparable as far as motor size, battery, uh, shocks. So let's get the review started first with a speed test. This is the speed test. I do have a full battery, pedal assist level one, and speed app open. Uh, nine for one, 12 for two, 17 for three, 20 for four, 25 for five. Well, I didn't quite hit 28 miles per hour. I was hoping. Sometimes I get surprised and these kind of newer brands just <laughs> are super fast, but 25 is pretty good, you know, for this bike. I'm happy with that. The acceleration on pedal assist is actually, it takes about a half a revolution on the easiest gear to get going. So it's very reactive, very sensitive from a standstill. But it felt kind of slow for a bike in this price range. I was expecting a little bit more oomph and just didn't get it. The S1 has a range rating of 30 to 45 miles. Now, in this category, the average range that most bikes get with, you know, about 800 feet elevation gain is around 15 to 25 miles. Uh, usually I get about half of what the rating is, so I should be around the 15 to 20 miles with this bike. Now, I am out here again in the desert. This is an all-terrain bike, so the whole test is being done off-road. This is pretty, uh, and this is a mixture of hard packs, some sands, a bunch of hills, so it should have some good elevation. Uh, some good obstacles to test this bike to see what it can actually do. Before I started this test, I did charge up the bike, so I have a full battery, and I actually started the tracking app about a couple miles ago. I'm actually already a little bit into the range test, so I'll continue on and see how long this thing can actually go. Now, this is the second bike I reviewed by SnapCycle, and I really like the paint these guys use. It's kind of hard to tell with my close-ups because it was a cloudy day when I did that, but the frame actually, or the paint on the frame, kind of shines and sparkles when the sun hits it. I think I'm actually taking this bike on terrain that's, it's probably not designed to go on. I mean, they have off-road tires, they've got, you know, front fork suspension, which I'll talk about later. So, you know, I look at the bike and I'm thinking, okay, let's go have some fun off-road, but really I think this is gonna perform better on a paved trail. I mentioned this before in other reviews, but just the posture that you have, which is super comfortable because you know, you're sitting straight up and don't have to lean over at all to grab the handlebars, but you are more top heavy. And so that does affect, you know, the type of terrain you can ride this on. That being said, going, you know, 10, 12 miles per hour on this type of terrain is, is actually pretty good. The bike can handle that speed and in this trail going that fast. One of the main reasons why I don't like to go that fast is, is it just rattles way too much. It does have, you know, half coverage uh, fenders on both the front and the back. Man, off-road, I've never really had quiet fenders. They are always vibrating and bouncing and making noise. And also that kickstand is vibrating and making noise as well. So you wouldn't get that if you had a smoother trail, obviously. Other than that, the motor's actually very quiet. Now with this being a foldable bike, everything, you know, adjusts, the handlebars adjust, handlebar stem adjusts, uh, it folds down, the bike collapses, folds down, pretty small, you know, big enough to where you can throw in the back of your truck or car. And it does have a size rating of 5'2 to 6'4, so it's got a big range of the type of person it can hold. Now the bike has aluminum alloy, six degree rise, 600 millimeter handlebars, and they're actually very narrow. You know, I, I don't like the length of these. 
They are pretty short for the size of the bike, especially for terrain that I'm taking this on. I like to see another four to five inches. To be honest, it's probably the most narrow handlebars I've seen on a foldable bike. But it does have ergonomic synthetic leather grips, which are very nice. I really like the grips. There's just something about grips, you know, it just it enhances or increases the quality of a bike. There's aluminum alloy comfort grip levers and they're big enough to where I could fit all four fingers there. On the right side, there's a Shimano SIS index thumb shifter. Quick and easy, no problems there. And then down below you have a Shimano tourney derailleur. So the whole system is very good. Haven't had any skipping or clicking or anything like that. It all locks in nice and tight. Snapcycle designed their own saddle and it's fairly large. Material feels kind of just average for a bike in this price range. Nothing really too special about it, but it does hold me in place pretty good. Now the pedal assist sensitivity is decent. When topping the bike out, you know, after I stop pedaling, uh, power cuts off about, you know, a fourth of a second, which is what I see with most pedal assist systems. And then when I begin to pedal, it comes on with about a half revolution, which is a little bit quicker and faster, more reactive than other uh, bikes in this class. The throttle also is very reactive. The power delivery is a little bit low for my taste. It just doesn't have that much power when you turn it. And the throttle does match the pedal assist level. This is the type of bike that does all the work for you. I mean, as soon as you're hitting like 10 miles an hour, even on the highest gear, really can't pedal or it's hard to pedal fast enough to make a, a difference. Just gotta keep the pedals turning and it does the rest for you. The S1 comes with front fork spring suspension that has 30 millimeters of travel and you're definitely gonna wanna be careful on the types of trails you take this on like I mentioned before. I do like the tires. It comes with the ST BFT 20 by 4 inch fat tires and they're kind of they're not the beefiest tire, actually. I have noticed I've been slipping around a little bit more, but they're doing a pretty good job. You know, there's uh, some sharp rocks and like kind of these rock gaps that are two, three inches that the tires just, you know, span the gap and go right over. One of my favorite reasons why I like fat tires is that you don't really have to, you know, watch out for <laughs> that type of terrain. You just see a rock garden and <laughs> head right through it. <laughs> Trust the tires aren't gonna pop and just power through. Okay, that wraps up the range test. Uh, my app recorded, what, just over 12 and a half miles with 900, about 950 feet in elevation gain, which is pretty good. I try to hit around 1,000 feet. Kind of wish I would have got, you know, 15 to 20 miles uh, for this terrain, but I did ride the bike hard, and I do have the app tracking as I'm doing all of my, you know, speed, brake, hill, test, all my testing. Uh, the app is recording, so there's a, a bunch of stop and go, some hard stops, some hard starts. <laughs> so I, I do ride the bike very hard, and I was on straight throttle about 95% of the time. I mean, if you put this on pedal assist, you know, two or three, which still gives you, you know, 12, 13 miles an hour, which is a good speed for this type of terrain. And if you're pedaling the entire time, like I think you could get uh, over 20, 25 miles. I do these tests to show you what the bike can do when it's like flat out, you know, going as hard as it can go. Okay, I found a pretty good size hill. I have my hill measuring device out. I'm gonna go uh, measure this in a couple different places and see how steep it is. Towards the start of the hill, that is 25%. In the middle, We've got uh, 35%, and then towards the top, that is 27%. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty loose, pretty loose dirt. There's been a bunch of uh, motorcycles and side-by-sides up here tearing it up. <laughs> That's a good hill to test to see what this bike can do. Get it back up and get a running start at this. And here we go. On the easiest gear. Oh boy, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> it is hard to climb on this thing because the front end of this bike is so light compared to the back. And so as you're pulling up on the handlebars, 
it pops the front wheel up and, uh, and then it's game over from that point. Well, I found another hill. Uh, it's actually on the left side of the hill. I just tried to go up. So it's about the same steepness, but it's a little bit more compact. It's not as loose as the other side was. So, so I'm gonna try to climb it again with some speed. Here we go. Starting to climb. Okay, I think I'm gonna make this one. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> My wheel's coming off the ground. Got to lean forward really far. There we go. To keep the wheel from popping up. That's just the difficult thing about climbing super steep hills with these types of bikes is it's just super easy to pop it up. But I made it, so it can be done. It's gonna, you know, you're gonna get a little bit of a workout and honestly, it probably couldn't go up any longer of a hill. That's uh, probably around 60, 70 feet. So short and steep, good. Long and steep, probably not. Let me give you a rundown of the screen and control pad. On the left, you have the control pad. Uh, there's the power button, hold that for a couple seconds. Screen turns on. And I do have it set to the highest brightness level. I've got no problem seeing the screen, very clear. And actually pretty big, that's 3.2 inches across. It's one of the larger screens. Back on the pad, there's the M button here. That just changes different readouts. So you have, you know, average speed, max speed, uh, odometer, and then time of the bike, time of the trip. Plus and minus to change the pedal assist levels, zero to five. Hold down the plus button to turn on the lights. And there's a spot for a tail light, but they don't give you one. So I think you can uh, just, you know, mount one if you want to buy it separately. To access the advanced settings, just double tap the mode button. And then here you can clear the trip odometer. This is changing the units from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. This is the screen level brightness. I'm not sure what that one is. Some of these you want to just leave alone. This is how you limit the speed. I do have a set to the highest speed of 28 miles per hour and that does go down to 12 miles per hour. And then you can also add a password if you wanna lock the bike. And then just hold down the mode button to go back to the home screen or actually double tap it. Well, the S1 has an IPX4 waterproof rating, which means that you can you know, take this in some puddles. It'll be okay. It can withstand a little splashing. It also has a one-year warranty, free shipping in the lower 48, and a 14-day free return policy. I did hop on their website and looked at the customer service option, which looks pretty legit. You can actually schedule a video call with one of their customer service techs, have them help you with any problems or issues that you have. You can also call them or text them. And again, they are based in California, so if you do have any you know, parts that you need, uh, they will be able to ship them to you pretty quick. Well, overall, I thought the S1 held up pretty good. I think I did take it on trails that it's really not designed to go on. Uh, keep this on like a paved trail or a nice gravel road, as I mentioned before. And I think that's where this is gonna perform the best. If you do take it off road, just avoid rocks at all costs. The shocks help out a little, but uh, it just rattles like crazy, which I just can't stand. If I did buy this for off-roading, I would definitely take off the kickstand and the front and rear fenders. You'd have a much better experience. If you want to pick it up, I've got a link in the description. I've also got a link over to my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. So if you need help choosing or figuring out which bike best fits your need, I would definitely check it out. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.